Alright, you guys are going to be getting a lot of skin food in the coming week or two because I have so many things I need to review and I actually reviewed a lot of these a few weeks ago, but I scrapped all the footage because I just was not happy with it. But today we're going to be talking about the Peach Cotton Collection. Now, when I first saw this in the skin food store, the first thing I immediately thought of was like the Too Faced Cotton Collection that they recent, well, was it recent that they came out? I'm not sure of like the timeline of when these came out, but one thing that, oh, you know, there are lots of innovations within K-Beauty, but one thing they're really good at is making kind of like dupes, I guess, for like things that you would see maybe in Sephora. And honestly, I don't know if you could even say copying at this point because so many brands, no matter where you are, kind of when one brand makes something new or innovative, the rest will follow suit. So the Peach Cotton line, basically the whole concept of it, it's supposed to peach. All the products, like most, like all skin food products, are supposed to have some kind of like um, food item in it, food ingredient. Um, and this one obviously peaches. It's supposed to help calm your skin. Uh, what does it say here? The peach is supposed to help calm your skin. And then the whole cotton thing, based, it's really, it's aimed really for oily skin. It's uh, supposed to give the skin a really soft, milky, fresh, fluffy, like all these types of, types of words, kind of finish to the skin. So it's gonna conceal pores, um, help control sebum. So dry skins, I would probably, I wouldn't say like completely avoid it because it's actually not, because when you think of like oil controlling products, you tend to think of very silicone-y, very like drying things. But I feel like this is a little bit leaning more in the middle, which is a good thing. Minus, of course, the powders. I don't know if you have, if you have dry skin, you might want to avoid heavy use of the powders. But say for like the base and like the cushion, they're more softer in texture rather than like matte dry finishes. Oh, and apparently there's calamine powder for health. I don't know what that is. Um, if someone cares to explain what that is, please let us know. But they're like five products. I have four of them. Um, I'll explain why I didn't get one of them later. But uh, we're gonna go through each one. I'll give you my thoughts as we are applying each one. And to kind of show you the difference between the two sides. Um, I'll do one side of my face. Now I will say right off the bat that skin food is not very good in terms of like shade, like foundation and concealer shades. They most of them tend to be only like one or two colors. Um, I might there might be a few liquid foundations that have maybe three colors, but even then they still are on quite like the lighter side. So um, that is a little bit of an issue that I run into with. Um, some of the skin food bases. So if you're considering this line of products, do keep that in mind. So starting off with a peach cotton tone up base, this is another one of those tone up creams that you'll see often in K-Beauty. Now I'm gonna have to make an entire video about this topic, about the whole whitening thing, because there are many, many misconceptions about it. A lot of things like this will have the word whitening on it, but a lot of people think like, oh my God, this is, they're, you're trying to like lighten your skin like 30 shades, but that's not the case. Um, that's why you'll often see tone up because it's more like brightening the complexion um, that you're already currently working with. So with this, I don't, I put it on my hand earlier on this hand, but for me, honestly, the tone up effect, like for me, my, my criteria for whitening cream is that it needs to be light. It needs to be airy. I don't, I don't want to feel it on my skin uh, when I have it on and I want it to be more like a natural brightening whitening effect. I don't want it to just look like I have heavy sunscreen on that part of the face or neck that I put it on. And with this one, I really enjoy the consistency because I was a little worried with because I knew the product line was supposed to be for like oily skin. So I was thinking, oh, if they have a primer, it would be like those really silicone-y dry primers that make my skin look dry. But this is not one of them. It has more of like a light lotion type of texture right here. And it has a little bit of a peachy undertone to it. So at the same time, it can really help um, I guess brighten the complexion without making it more so brightening rather than oh we're going to whiten your skin the same way that sunscreen whiten your skin you know what I mean so with that being said you do get a little bit more of like more so than brightening I think it kind of just makes my skin tone a little bit more peachy but honestly I, the difference I feel like it doesn't make it doesn't make too much of a difference in terms of tone up creams because my favorite one the G9 skin that can like one or two layers can really help like brighten your skin maybe like half a shade lighter and for me generally I only tend to use whitening creams on my neck because I don't like the idea of put, having to put foundation on my face and my neck so if my foundation is too lighter or for camera if I know that there's gonna be a lot of flashback I'll put whitening cream on my neck just to even it out this one I guess I wouldn't mind putting on my neck because when it dries down 
it does leave, it doesn't feel sticky, it doesn't feel um, oily or greasy like maybe sunscreen would, uh, which is why I like it, and a little bit does go a long way. This would actually also re be really good for those people that, let's say maybe your face is lighter than your neck, or vice versa, and your skin is actually generally pretty good, and you don't really need foundation, you just need to maybe like even out your complexion a little bit. I think this um, product would be good for that because it just barely, not lightens, but it just brightens the complexion. Of course, when you start to get into like much deeper skin tone territory, it, the effect might end up looking ashy. Oh, and also I forgot to mention, this is SPF 30 PA double plus. And the main, because even though I like this collection, one of the main issues I have with it is that because every single product has pretty high SPF, and also because the the cushion itself is a little bit light for me. The effect that I end up getting is like flashback times 10 because I have all these SPF products building up on top of my skin. So it's really important that if you are my skin tone or slightly deeper, you need to be careful with if, when it comes to like layering the product because if you put too much of any of them, then you will definitely get like that white cast. Sorry if you can hear cars in the background. The, my house is really hot right now. And I have to open the windows. And I'm gonna put some on my neck. Because like I said, I tend to only put, if I put anything on my neck, it'll be like that G9 skin whitening cream because I don't feel any, I don't feel it on my skin. This one also I don't mind because the texture is like a really soft kind of finish. Now hopefully the SPF isn't really flashing back on camera. Again, all this stuff on my, my monitor is gray right now, but um, it only like s only really bright my col complexion a little bit, which is a good thing. I'd rather have it more brightened and awake looking than like white and ghostly. I don't know how it is translating on camera, but in person it looks pretty good for now. We'll see until we start putting on the other products. All right, now here we've got the peach cotton cushion and this one is in number two, natural beige. The inside looks like. Now, like all the other products in this line, this also has peach and calamine or whatever. And it's one of those cushions that's going to give you a soft matte finish. And what I really enjoy about this is how I can get away with a little product, but it really gives me really good coverage. But it, the way it makes my skin look, it... How do you describe it? You know the way like baby skin looks super soft? And of course, with my shit skin, it's not it's not gonna look like baby skin, but you know the skin babies have is just very like soft and like fresh and you know like the, the 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 surface of like a peach is very soft. So yeah. It's luckily this one's not too too pink. It's more neutral. I guess. And I think because I did put some of that tone up cream on my neck, um, it's okay. It's looking okay. But for the coverage that I got, it's actually not too bad. And uh, it does claim that it will cover blemishes and things. And now because it is more of a matte finish, it's much easier to layer the product for more coverage. Like, I think here I do need a little bit more because the product is building on top of itself. If it was more dewy and glowy, Every time I pat it into the skin with the cushion, it would kind of just pick up more of the product and kind of like move it around rather than it set and then you put almost like if you're layering nail polish, you need to wait for the first layer to dry. But this one, because uh, by nature it's matte, it makes it much easier to layer. For my dark circle, I would definitely need to go in with like a separate concealer, like a color corrector because it's just making my under eye look gray. But as you can see here, the finish is really pretty. It's a really soft, natural, kind of um, velvety sort of finish. It wasn't really able to cover like this spot that I have cropping out right now on my neck. Um, and on my chin, I do have to build it up a little. But yeah, basically this is what you're getting with this cushion. So honestly, I think with those two products alone, I think it would be great for everyday makeup uh, because it's more of a matte finish. You don't ha really have to worry too much about putting powder. If you have really oily skin, then definitely I recommend setting with powder. But maybe for me, with it, with me having oily skin and it becoming more winter time, I think this would be sufficient if I just need to make sure that I moisturize because what happens is 
in my chin hair where there's like that dip right here, it cracks really easily. And if the foundation is more on the matte side, it, more on the matte side, it will look cakey and patchy there by like within a few hours. And although this cushion does leave the skin with a really pretty finish, um, I feel like the wear time is just average. Um, if I'm wearing the powders, it'll, it will, it's fine. It will last all day, but um, I think alone it wouldn't work that well on my really oily skin. Might fare a little bit differently now that it's winter time, but with the durability, I think it comes off to be more of like definitely a road shop um, brand. But the, but the thing is with this cushion, it is quite expensive, I think, for it being a road shop cushion. It's, I think it was 18,000 won, with, and there's no refill. So I think it's a little bit pricey. Next up, I have two powders here. There's actually a third powder. The multi-finish powder, I literally use this in like all my videos. Back last year or so, when Sunny Dye had introduced me to the peach sake powder, uh, it disappeared for a little bit. And I was like, where the hell did she go? But I think they that became so popular that they decided to make a whole line based around the peach thing. So the, I, I, this is pretty much the same thing. It's just, um, it smells slightly different and um, it just has a different name. This comes in two sizes, but I think the large size, you might as well just go with the large size because um, the large, it's only about like, what, 10-ish, a little over $10. I feel like this size goes such a long way. Like I still have a lot, a ton in there. So definitely, um, I recommend, this is one of my favorite powders of all time. It's basically just like all those other HD powders. And again, it has like the, the ingredients to help like calm your skin or whatever. Uh, I just like it, I love it because of the way it makes my skin look and I love the smell. So um, on the side that we're working on right now, I'm gonna use that multi-finish powder, but I wanna talk about the Pore Sun Pact. Now I said there were three powders, but um, there are basically two versions of this. There's the Pore Sun Pact, which is this one, it has SPF, 42 PA triple plus and there's this one basically but no SPF and that's that one is just the pore packed um, And I decided to get this one because the pore pack is just a solid uh, pressed version of this uh, And this one is basically a pressed version of this but with SPF and I kind of made a mistake because when I was looking at the back There are actually two shades um, one and two but I wasn't really looking at like the name of the shade. I just looked, I just saw number two. I was like, I assumed, oh, I must be number two because I'm not like gonna be one, which I assume would be super light. But actually number one is called clear, which I'm assuming is just translucent. And number two is actually called pink. So when I tried this on, I was like, mm, I'm looking a little peachy. But when it's on the skin, it comes, it doesn't really come off as pink to me. If anything, maybe it makes my skin look a little bit more like the undertone more peachy apricotty. So I suppose if your skin tone can take it um, and it won't look too crazy, uh, I think maybe the peach one is fine, but just to be safe, I'd probably go with clear. Let me just set this side first with the multi finish powder um, before I continue talking about the pore sun pack because I have some I have some thoughts on it. Now it comes with a really useful, I think this is one of the best tools to use when applying powder. Cause sometimes, you know, it's cute to, you know, put on your powder with like, you know, big powder brush and just like, gently press but for me with oily skin girl i need that i need that puff because i need enough powder to like push into the skin and oftentimes you're not really setting your makeup if you just like oh use a little powder with a big fluffy powder brush because if anything I, I feel like the bristles are absorbing the oil and making it look like your skin is more mattified and really like only like a minute percent of powder is going on the skin so i do like to use a huge puff um lately i've been like, super into this one because it just makes putting powder on way faster and easier but i think this is a really great puff it's like a really good size to just quickly powder your face but what i like to do is put some in my hand like this and take my puff whether it be that one or this one and kind of just rub it in like really rub it in and then kind of do that there's still a lot of powder in here but i'm trying to even it out on the puff and then the powder of the skin. This makes a really fantastic powder for baking as well. It's great for if you're the type of person that loves to wear like powder blusher, contour and things because it makes the surface of the skin really smooth and makes it easy to blend all your powders on top of it. Um, see at this point I'm starting to think that my face is looking slight, even though I did put the tone up cream on my neck. It is starting to look a little bit, like it's not too, too bad, but on camera it's probably looking really bad. But it's starting to make me look like, not ghost face exactly, but you can definitely see, maybe it's just only because I can see this side. See, I think, I think with all the makeup on, it's gonna look much better. 
but you can see what it does to my skin. It definitely brightens my skin a, quite a bit. Um, and it makes it just look more awake, I believe. It's just more like fresh. But yeah, that powder is like A+. Plus. Definitely recommend top 10 makeup products of like all time. All right, so I put the tone base on this side and also the cushion. Um, the pore sun packed. Now for me, I mean, it, it definitely conceals pores just like most HD powders do. Um, but the powder itself is really pressed in there. So you do definitely need to use the, where is it? The puff that comes with it. It's really thin. I mean, it's, it's an okay puff. Um, but you really need to, for me, and it's really small, so I constantly have to keep, like, I'll put a little bit on my face, kind of pat it around, and dip back in, and I have to do that for my whole face. It does take quite a bit of time, because I feel like, again, if you're just using a powder brush, you're still gonna kind of have to, like, keep going back in, because I don't feel like you're getting enough product on the brush, and what happens is, you end up building a lot of product on your face, and this is a sun-packed, so it does have really high SPF. Um, it might have to do with the fact that it's, you know, pink or whatever and you know even translucent powders maybe um when you start to really build it up it can really give you that white cast and this is no exception now what do I, what i think is this great for if your skin tone can take it um if you're more on like maybe mac and c and w20 and lighter then i think you'll be you'll be you'll fare okay with this uh, but what i think it's great for is because i get some questions about like how do you reapply spf throughout the day personally I don't reapply SPF um, only because I'm inside a building most of like my life right now so um, I don't um, really go out too much to where I feel like SPF is like breaking down and I need to reapply sunscreen so let me just apply this again I don't know if you can see this on camera I can't tell because it's gray right now but I mean just like the loose powder version it will mattify your skin and it will give you like that finish that this side did, but some people might like this form, might think it's much faster and easier, but I I don't know. In person, I can kind of tell. This side is a little bit more white casty than the other, but in a way, it kind of gives a little bit more coverage, I guess. But I don't know. Oh, you can see right here. There's definitely a difference. So for me, it's okay. I think it would be great if you're again if you have more light or fair skin. Definitely a something you might uh, might be worth looking into um, for if you're looking for a kind of product that you can reapply throughout the day to get your SPF reapplied. Okay, I think I went a little bit too hard on my eyebrow. <laughs> so I put everything on more so than maybe flashback or looking too white casted. You can see the effect that it gives the skin, and that's what I really like about this line. It just makes your Skin looks so smooth, like a baby's ass. But at the same time, it can be, it's a little, only because it's for my personal skin tone, it's a little, I'm on the fence about it a little bit because it can, um, it, some, it just looks a little too, it can just look a little too light for me. Now I think adding a bit of blush to my face and uh, maybe if I add, I, did, I, I didn't actually put contour on my face, but I'm sure that would definitely help. So for me being an NC25 skin tone, um, I kind of am a fine line with this. If you're any lighter, then you probably don't have to worry about any of those issues. Um, but yeah, that's what we're working with. Definitely for someone with more of a oily skin, combo oily skin, any dry patches, I feel like um, the cushion or the powders will definitely cling onto. But I think you can probably make it work if you definitely make sure that your skin is moisturized. And I'm not, I'm not talking about like, oh, like a light moisture. I'm talking about like you are the type of person that will use either like heavy or decently moisturizing creams, or you maybe add an oil to your skincare routine. Uh, but I just like how it, it gives me this finish without it feeling too like dry mattifying. Um, Cause there are some foundations that are not necessarily meant to be oil controlling, but they're meant to be more like pore minimizing, but those end up looking really dry on me because maybe there's just too many silicones and things like that. But I like how, uh, although this is keeping my skin matte, it's 
the textures are very soft and refined. It's just that if you have dry skin, I feel like you might have more issues with this um, baseline. Oh, and if you have blemishes, I have a good feeling it's gonna cling onto like the the blemish that have like that really that dead the, you know the, the blemish that have like a top like dead skin bit like when you put foundation on you see like this dead skin on top of the blemish. I have a good feeling it would cling onto those. But you can see right here, this isn't really a blemish blemish, but it didn't completely cover it. So I think it's more so better just covering like areas of redness rather than like individual dark spots of redness and hyperpigmentation. But definitely these are the kind of base products that I know a lot of maybe Korean students would be really into um, because it just makes your skin look, there's no fuss or like, you know, you're not left with like a super like, like a glowy finish that can be a little um, high maintenance. You're just left with like really pretty soft skin. The wear time is just okay. Um, it, wearing it, I didn't notice like, oh, like it broke down so quickly, but I also didn't notice like, oh my God, like I can wear this all day and things. It's just, it's normal, but I think it's good for like a normal day, maybe going to work or school. And I think that's it. If you're planning on wearing it from like dusk till dawn, I don't know, especially depending on how much oil your skin produces. I don't know how long it will last. If your skin isn't too oily, it's more, Leaning a little bit more uh, like normal level of oily and normal skin, you definitely fare much better with this. But super oily skins, well, um, you might maybe need to use a different kind of primer or maybe even use the multi finish powder before your foundation, which is also an option because that gives you more coverage with your foundation and it helps it last much longer. But yeah, anyway, there's my review of the Peach Cotton line from Skin Food. Some things to keep in mind are the shades. Um, you need to make sure that the cushion at least is within your skin tone uh, range. And oh, also, if your skin is too yellow, for me, in person, not really on camera, it's giving me a sort of like brightening effect. I feel like if I was super, super yellow, um, then it would you would see that stark contrast. Because in terms of brightening, it does give you a little bit of like a peach undertone. So it's not just brightening from like, oh, we're making your skin look whiter, like you have sunscreen on. It's more like we're kind of slightly adjusting the undertone of your skin to create a more natural brightening effect. And I feel like if your undertone is too maybe yellow, or it might even look really weird if it, your skin is very, very pink. You just need to try this in store. I'm sorry, I'm very, I'm, I'm getting too like into it, but, but hopefully you get what I'm trying to talk about from, hopefully what I've been talking about in this review, but uh, anyway, I'll link the stuff down below if you want to check it out. On And if you're in Korea, I definitely recommend going out to the store to check it out and maybe swatching it. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this and um, I'll see you later. Bye.